Did you think that making a budget in Google Sheets would be easy? I did, but it took me years and something around 50 tries to make my perfect budget spreadsheet. It was a total grind, and I really wish I'd known how to do it smarter. So, to help you make your perfect Google Sheets budget, here are 16 lessons I learned that will save you a ton of time. Lesson number one. After so many failed attempts to make the perfect spreadsheet, I shifted my focus to creating something that's just simple and user-friendly, and I found that spreadsheet to truly fit my lifestyle the best. So lesson number one is to focus on creating something simple, that works for you instead of trying to make the perfect spreadsheet. It'll save you tons of time and frustration. Lesson number two, I really used to worry that if my spreadsheet wasn't perfect, I'd be stuck with a terrible spreadsheet for life. And then I realized that life changes, my budget changes, and as simple as it sounds, it's okay to make a new budget to fit the new me. So for lesson number two, don't worry that you'll be stuck with your budget spreadsheet forever. Life changes, and Google Sheets makes it possible to make a new one every once in a while, and that is really good news. Lesson number three, I always thought that if my budget was customized just right, it would make managing my money easy. But thinking like that just always led to failure. So I started thinking more about how I was using my budget instead. I found that using my budget more often was the key that made money much easier to organize. So lesson number three is to focus more on using your budget more often rather than building an expertly crafted custom budget. This even goes back to lesson number one where I mentioned that simple and user-friendly is better than perfect. Lesson number four, getting clarity on your spending habits is really hard because habits are so automatic that they can be really hard to spot. So instead of just copying and pasting my data into Google Sheets, I started manual tracking instead. What's amazing is now how where I really am of my spending habits. Plus, since using my budget often is now a habit, I keep things simple and it takes very little time. So for lesson number four, manually tracking your spending leads to amazing clarity on your spending habits. And if you keep things simple and make it a habit, it will take you maybe 10 minutes every other day. That's not much. Lesson number five. Especially when I was first starting out, my spreadsheets used to be so ugly. <laughs> so I started to put more time and thought into the design. Once I did, my budget not only looked better, but it was a lot easier to use and fun to use. So lesson number five is to actually spend some time and effort on the aesthetic design. It makes the whole budgeting process a whole lot more enjoyable. Lesson number six, Speaking of design, have you ever felt like you're just drowned in colors, completely overwhelmed? Well, that's how some of my first designs made me feel, and it was uh, unpleasant. So I started using color with intention, and that problem disappeared. So for lesson number six, use color with intention, not just randomly. This will keep you from going overboard and keep things simple. Hmm. I think there's a common theme here with this simple idea. Anyway, lesson number seven. At first, I never knew which data points I should track for each transaction. The date, amount, credit, debit, etc. Jeez, <laughs> so much to worry about. But I narrowed it down to five main things, and it keeps my data streamlined. So for lesson number seven, you only really need to track the date, description, amount, category, and account for each transaction. That will give you enough data to manage your finances effectively. Lesson number eight. Although the date does help me categorize my transactions by month, I sometimes found that a transaction with a post date for one month really belonged to a different month. So to fix this, I added an extra data column where I could pick a specific month. So for lesson number eight, add a month column for more flexibility. It is one more data point, but it's a really easy one to add. Lessons nine and 10 kind of go together. It's true that manually tracking your data can be fast if you keep it simple and consistent. But what about mistakes? Typos happen all the time. So how do you ensure that your data is actually correct? I found that there are two things that you can do to help. 
Lesson nine is to use data validation to create dropdowns for account names and categories. This way, you don't end up with three of the same categories with different spellings. Lesson 10 is to track your account balances. List your accounts, give each a start value, which is the current balance when you first start tracking. Then, once you set up your formulas to calculate the live balance based on your data, you can check that your spreadsheet balances match your actual account balances, which means that all of your data is actually correct. Lesson 11. Figuring out which functions to use to analyze my data was always a pain, but after tons of trial and error, I found I was using the same two functions over and over again, and now these are really the only two functions I ever need. So lesson 11 is that you really only need two functions to analyze the bulk of your data, and those are sumifs and xlookup. With these two functions alone, I'm able to create spreadsheets that look like this. Lesson 12. When I first started out, most of my formulas were long and confusing. Then I discovered range names and started using them. Now my formulas are easier to write and make a lot more sense. So lesson number 12 is to learn about range names and start using them in your formulas. It will really make your life a whole lot easier. Lesson number 13. Another major issue that plagued my budgets early on was that they had these terribly complex dashboards that basically told me nothing. <laughs> so I switched to making dashboards that stay simple and only tell me the most important things, the things that I really care about. And it's made my personal finances so much more clear. So for lesson 13, your dashboards and your spreadsheets don't have to tell you everything. They just need to tell you the most important things. This is what will bring you the most clarity and peace of mind. Lesson number 14. So it's good to know that you wanna keep things like your dashboards simple and to the point, but there's a little more to it. One of my early mistakes was trying to display single values as fancy charts like this. What this actually does is create clutter and confusion. I can't even tell what this exact number might even be. So for lesson number 14, if you're going to display single values, use numbers, not charts. This gives you more precision and creates less clutter. Now for lesson 15, numbers are great one or two at a time, but a horde of numbers is just completely overwhelming. So I found that when I'm looking for patterns or trends, charts and graphs make a lot more sense. They save space and tell a better story. So for lesson number 15, if you wanna see patterns or trends, use charts and graphs instead of numbers. This is how to really read into the story behind your finances. Finally, we have lesson 16. After I got married, I wasn't budgeting by myself anymore but I still loved being the one to design the whole budget. So at first I'd build the budget and explain to my wife how it works. She was supportive and on board, but did have a hard time using it. Not good. <laughs> so after a few failed attempts, I got her input on the design and I bet you can guess what happened. It made a world of difference. So for lesson 16, if you're budgeting with a partner, get their input on the design instead of just building it and teaching it to them. They'll understand it much better, be more willing to use it, and it makes the whole process a lot smoother. But you're probably wondering, this all sounds great, but now how should I actually go about starting my budget in Google Sheets? And if that's you, then you should really watch this video next that'll show you step-by-step -step how to make a quick and simple budget right in Google Sheets. It's a really awesome starting point, so don't miss it.